All right. If you don't have a piece of lined paper already, pull out a piece of lined paper. Let's talk significant digits. Yes, sir. Ma'am. Oh. Okay. So I'll have to take my hand away to get the, the contrast to work out. All right, so significant digits. I'm going to go through a few of the rules here. The first rule, all measured values, or all measured digits, I should say, plus one estimated digit are significant. sounds a little bit, uh, maybe not very self-explanatory. Let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So if I have, and I, I guess previously I used a hot dog, what do you want to measure the length of? What's that? Well, something that I can draw on the page fairly easily. Hockey stick. Okay, a hockey stick. Okay, so we've got a hockey stick. Yeah, well, whatever. It's a hockey stick. Let's put a knob on the end. All right. Not a very artistic looking hockey stick. But anyway, let's say that I do measure my hockey stick. Um, I can actually get a real ruler here. You got a real ruler here. I can measure the length of my hockey stick. I can see by looking at this ruler, you know, with the naked eye, that right about there is where the seven mark is. Oh, I should, maybe I should mark this. Right about there is where the seven is. So this is a little bit longer than seven. Looks to me like it's about, oh, for sure it's at the seven mark. So I can say it's at least seven centimeters, but it's a little bit more than seven centimeters. I would say it's not quite 7.1 centimeters. So I can't say that it's 7.1. It's about halfway in between 7.0 and 7.1. So I could say 7.0 for sure. Not exactly. Not exactly. So I would estimate that it's 7.05 centimeters long. It's not quite. It's, I know, it's not quite 7.1, but it's definitely 7. So what I can be certain of is that it's at least 7.0. And then I can estimate an extra digit, so 7.05 centimeters. And that's what it means to say all measured digits plus one estimated digit, the 5 is estimated, are significant. So if I wanted to say with confidence that as far as I can see with my naked eye, this drawing of a hockey stick is 7.05 centimeters. That could be a valid statement. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Picking up what I'm putting down. So it doesn't have to be hockey sticks. It could be, you know, race cars, whatever. I don't have to use little rulers like this one. I can use a, a great big meter stick. I could use any other length measuring device. But it goes for any type of measurement. All right. For zeros. Using zeros, I mean, I know this sounds like it's going to be like elementary school time, but we're going to learn how to use zeros today. And we're going to learn how to multiply and add and subtract, okay? Really high level stuff, but the rules are going to be a little bit different from what you've seen in the past. And I don't mean this to be like patronizing, but I mean, you know, there are slightly different rules, okay? So the use of zeros. If the zero is between two digits, in a measured value. Then it is considered significant.
And what I mean by that is this. If I have something like a, uh, you know, you might have a, like a beaker of water or, or any liquid, and somebody measures it off to be 301 milliliters, I would say, oh, okay, so if I was going to do some calculations using that measurement, and I'll, we'll talk about how, to, how significant digits figure into calculations in a little bit, but if I was going to do some calculations involving that measurement of water, that volume of water, I would say that there are three significant digits there. Three digits that are significant in that recorded measurement. Now, if you've taken chemistry, maybe in grade 10, you reached up and took grade 11 chemistry. Is there anybody in here that did that? So you guys have seen significant digits, significant figures before, right? Nothing new so far for you guys. For the rest of us, this is you know a new ball game. But for you guys, you're, you're pros probably. Um, so I'm going to say, but, dot, 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 if the zeros are what we call trailing, trailing with no decimal place, I want to give an example. So for example, 500 milliliters, it's actually a little bit ambiguous. I can't tell for sure if that's three significant digits or two significant digits or one significant digit. Because what I'm saying here is that I can measure it. I mean, significant digits is really kind of a statement of how good my measuring device is, right? What I'm saying here is that I can measure to within an accuracy of half of a millimeter, more or less. What I'm saying here is that I, I can measure to within an, an accuracy of one milliliter. How accurate is my measurement? 500 milliliters. Is it to within one milliliter? Is it to within the nearest 100 milliliters? Is it, is it to within the nearest 10 milliliters? That, the way that's written there, it's not clear. It really isn't. And signif if significant digits is about clarity of precision and accuracy, then this is not clear. What I could say to clarify this is, is something more like this. I could say 500 milliliters with a line over top of the final zero. That line indicates that this is accurate to within one milliliter. I could say this, 500 with a line over that zero. How accurate is my measuring device now? To the nearest 10 milliliters. If I just say 500 milliliters though, that's really ambiguous. And somebody reading it wouldn't know, okay? Another way to clarify the, uh, the precision of this measurement could be using scientific notation. So I could write 500 milliliters or I could choose to write 5.0 times 10 to the power of two milliliters. You've seen scientific notation before. You know, 10 to the power of two means 100, right? So five times 100 is 500. So really, this is the same as this. But what's this telling me about the precision? How accurate is this? Yeah. To the nearest 10. Yeah, to the nearest 10. So it's actually telling me the same level of precision as this one. What if I were to write 5.00 times 10 to the power of 2? Which one is that the same as? And the second one. It's to within the nearest one milliliter. Because out to that zero is how accurate I'm being. Oh, I should write the units. I want to make mom proud. Write all your units all the time. Okay? Now, if I want to talk about significant digits, how many significant digits does that top one have? Yeah? One. No. Three. The top one is two, actually. Two. Yeah. So we saw this. See, this guy here has. That's okay. That's okay. It's been a while, right? Two sig digs. How many does that one have? Three. What about this one over here? Is it one, two, or three? Yeah? It, it, it might have been one for the top one, because it was still ambiguous. But as soon as I put a line over top of that zero there, it suddenly means that all three of those guys are significant parts of my measurement. 
Okay, so I would say that this guy here is three. I'll just shorten it up and say SDs, significant digits. Okay, and of course this guy here would be how many? Two. Two, yeah. Okay, so two different ways of really indicating how significant or how, how uh, precise your measurement might be. Okay, how, which digits are going to be significant in your measurements. Can I take this away? Yeah? All right. Here's another rule. Rule number four. I'll bring it down onto the page for you. Rule number four. If the trailing zero comes after a decimal, it is considered significant. It is considered significant. So for example, if I had um, 5.00 times 10 to the power of 2 milliliters, we just said that that is three significant digits. But what about this? 5.0 grams. How many significant digits is that based on this new rule? Yeah. All right. Um, what about this one? Thirty-six point four zero kilograms. How many significant digits is that? Yes, sir. Four. It is four. Yeah. Now, if I really wanted to you know, be fancy with this, I could turn 36.40 kilograms into scientific notation. What would it look like in scientific notation? Yeah? 3.64 times 10 to the 2. 3.64, um, well, the 0 we just said was significant. Times 10 to the 1. Yeah, times 10 to the 1. So it is times 10 to the 1 kilograms. But we have to also include the 0. Because we just claimed that this measurement here, 3.640, has four significant digits. So if I want to turn it into scientific notation, I have to take all four of those significant digits into the scientific notation along with me, okay? So if I had, well, another example might be this. 52,460 kilowatts. Can you tell the way it's written as it is? Can you tell if there's five significant digits there or four? What would I have to do to clarify that? Yeah? You don't know? Okay. Yeah, I could either write 52,460, oopsie, 460 decimal kilowatts. Some people choose to do that. Uh, some people choose to do 52,460 with a line over top of the zero kilowatts. I would lean more towards that. Okay? And some people will choose to take the scientific notation route, because scientific notation is really going to make those sig figs or the sig significant digits pop at you. If I write it in scientific notation, 5.2460 times 10 to the power of, how many times did I move that decimal place? Four. Four. Kilowatts. There's no doubt about it. There are five sig digs there. Scientific notation is really the kicker if I want to know how many sig digs there are. Like if I have um, 0 0.0092 meters as my measurement, and I want to put it into scientific notation, somebody might look at that and say, hey, there's four, five significant digits there. And you'd say, honey, you're a nut. I can put it into scientific notation, and I can see in a second there are how many? Yeah, two, yeah. Because if I put that in scientific notation, it's going to be 9.2 times, and I move the decimal place over once, twice, three times, 9.2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters, okay? 
the, the positive or negative on the 10 to the power of tells me which direction I move the decimal place, right? So 9.2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters, and immediately the two, two significant digits pops right out at me. And that's important for when I do calculations later on. There is, actually, you know what? I think I want to stop there for, for rules about significant digits in this vein of thinking. Are there any questions? Yeah? If it's trailing on now, if it's trailing on the right hand side, but it's after decimal, though, I won't do this as a separate rule. But if it was 0 0.00360 meters, there's no reason to rate that zero, except to say that it's significant. Yeah. So if it's to the right of the digits and it's after the decimal, yeah, you're implying that it's significant. Okay. And I'd rate it as 3.6. Oopsie. 3.60 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. Okay, so I'm, in, I'm implying that it's significant because otherwise there's no reason to rate that zero we all know when we're writing decimals, except to sort of specify how accurate I'm being. Okay, 